Hello, um, this is a lecture on money. We are aware of America's $200 trillion uh, debt, which is a part of the uh, cunning plan to put the whole world into infinite debt, that's individuals and governments. Um, it's being done by bribery and corruption. If this debt crashes, and it looks like it's going to, then America, followed by every other country in the world, will, will, will go into a financial collapse. You need a financial recovery plan. Um, this debt has been driven by 50 years of uncontrolled expenditure, mostly on secret wars, building 1,000 secret underground cities for the elites, and also a, a secret space and alien contact a war, basically. It's been going on for at least 30 years, which no one knew about. <coughs> there has been no comparable expenditure on infrastructure or social organisations of mutual benefit to anybody in that society. This is becoming true all over the world. This runaway financial expansion has been encouraged and exacerbated by the criminal conspirings of secret negative sex in the banking world, which also uh, now appear in all the political systems of the West. The situation is now extremely grave. Because America's unsupervised political system is now utterly corrupted and managed solely in favour of an ambitious, unprincipled section of the population, uh, the criminal elements will continue in their, man in their in power maintaining this destructive expansion of America's debt for several more decades. They're also doing the same in Europe and they will do the same in other parts of the world. Now, essentially, their plan is to organise the world into three financial areas each one dominated and operated by a central bank, but of course each of these central banks will themselves be operated by this cabal. <coughs> because the, the, the section of American society involved in this hostile takeover, not just of America, but all the world financially, is also closely connected with international banking, this is how they're doing it, is the exact same financial method methodology in, in each case. And what they encourage is uh, an addiction to spend and debt, and uh, which obviously snowballs. It comes to a point when you cannot pay back your debts. And this uh, talk is, is how to address that problem, because it is a form of economic warfare, it's exactly what it is. <coughs> it is being surreptitiously conducted globally by this same group. The financial reorganisation of the planet into three monetary areas under the impartial supervision of America, or outwardly, is in fact pure deception. America will not be supervising anything. Uh, she will not benefit in any way. In fact, it's going to get go from bad to worse until politically and financially America as, as an entity will cease to exist. We're all aware of this. What no one realises is that they will continue, this new world order cabal, to, to, to conduct themselves in such a fashion that no country in the world will exist. There won't be any countries. <coughs> And again, it's much the same uh, cabal or group of spiritual neg spiritually negative types. So Europe, if you include UK, is, is overall falling into the exact same trap. And it will be followed by the Orient, Russia and the Pacific regions in due course. My ideas are how to address this, um, I these issues, this form of economic war. Uh, and I also seek to be impartial and benevolent to all people in every continent. So I'm not pro or anti-America, I'm not pro or anti-anybody. <coughs> We're all going to be blighted by this. You can't actually work with infinite debt because you can't even afford to feed yourself. Um, I can't ignore the identity of the culprits. This is what the mistake that everybody's making is they won't just stand up and say who's doing this for various reasons, mostly cowardice or treachery or corruption themselves. But it is just the one group. And who it is to just get it out into the open is never mind the historical things or the spiritual things. It's an international cabal of mostly uh, Jewish persons who are extremely rich. And, uh, you know, they've done it all by corrupting everybody, by subsuming governments and by continual operations of murder. This, this group is international. It doesn't regard themselves as law to any one particular country or to the, even their own root race. They're not, they're not loyal. And uh, they're all very negative. The spiritual grouping we, we're used to calling these sort of people Satanists, but in fact their form of spirituality is alien in or origin. It can't be any good for anybody to wipe out the entire human race. 
Only people who can benefit from that are the aliens. So in effect, they're quizzing, so they're a quizzing government in, make, in the making. The immediate remedial steps are as follows. A. Abandon and reject any suggestion of central banks uh, per continental region. That is how they're going to do this. B. All countries to revert to normal national and fiscal so sovereignty. What they're doing is they're proffering a free market or an industrial um, free zone. But what you actually get is this central banking and this spend addiction, this spend and debt thing. That's what you're actually signing up for. Since nobody did sign up for that, we understood it all to be a free market, then the whole thing's a fraud. In which case, all treasonous agreements are null and void, then, aren't they? Uh, these fake laws everywhere are ruining the social fabric, as is mass immigration everywhere, which is also another form of warfare. Therefore, I recommend reverting to the known and accepted laws of our uh, earlier ages. They renew what those laws were, both the ordinary people and the ruling caste. And they were all accepted. And this was the days of common sense. So I suggest about 1960 for the political and financial systems. And uh, you've got to stop all the wars, basically. You've just got to stop them or suspend them in some way while we all uh, nose along our flanks and find out who the hell hit us with our arrow. And what we've got to do is we've just got to stop all the wars right now. You've got to go through which ones are, are actually legal and acceptable and necessary. You're going to find that 90% of them were not. <coughs> you put every military and political figure, you're going to have to put most of them on trial to prove the legality and necessity of their various operations. Perpetrators of atrocities are now more and more coming to light, hard to be taken to the, to, to the Hague, be tried you know, as normal. A war crime is still a war crime, no matter which, which is your country, if we do them you will pay the price. The rich and the big businesses to pay their fair share in taxes. You cannot have a country, any country, where the rich people pay no taxes, whatever. I don't care what their excuses are, if they're alive, they've got to pay their share, just as you would in a family. You can't have the poor holding all the, the, the um, burden, you can't. And uh, it, it's immoral and eventually it will result in civil war, of course it will. So a record of repeated avoidance of tax, in fact, all these sorts of activities are all crimes. It's not good saying well, it's legal. No, it's not. Especially not if you've amended the law to suit yourself. Of course it's not legal. In any case, you can have something that's legal that is still morally wrong. It's not right. So in cases where these, where these repeated tax avoidances alone are proven, then what you've got to do is you've got to punish them with double confiscation. Hit them twice and they won't do it anymore. And then what you've got to go to is E. All debt to be scrutinised per country. Is it fair, honest, reasonable? Is it for services or goods rendered? If it is, then that's a real, honest, sane debt and it should be retained, it should be paid as quickly as possible in a normal fashion. Look for very high interest rates or for very mean or stupid uh, fail clauses. Those are the ones to look for. And where you find them, you ask the same questions, and if it isn't, if it's demonstrably just gambling, or criminal, or buccaneering for this group, you simply, legally, by legal fear, just knock them straight out of existence. You just cancel them. You just say no. They're crimes in the making. It has to be done by law, it has to be done by a court, it has to be done by consent of the people, by their actual representatives in Congress or Parliament. Alright, so you've got to get rid of these ruling castes as well, because they've all the lot of them been traitorous. Okay, so you cancel the biggest amount of the debt by legal fear, right? So then you've got to clean your parliaments and your congress of these hostiles. Don't forget it's not the racial group, it's guilty parties within that group. You're going to find that they're nearly all in Freemasonry or Satanism of some sort. Um, F, you've got to redistribute the, the criminal proceeds that are mostly held by the banks in hidden accounts and all sort of thing take it back. It's not theirs. A bank can't own anything. It's a bank. Everything in that bank is by definition owned by somebody else. So pay it back to the nations from whom it's been stolen, proportionate to the debt they have incurred. Nations that have been profligate or reckless, they're going to have to pay that debt. No good them trying to shunt under somebody else and not going to have that. And uh, the governments, once decontaminated, are going to put that money into uncontaminated banks or credit unions. 
and accept they can use it for anything. Obviously, it's their money, it's their business. We all got to agree, nation by nation, country by country, they can't use it, not straight away for military purposes. The militaries of every country, whistle doesn't they come first for the largest share of the cake? And the answer is no. They've got to wait for two years while all this is sorted out. And then they can start again in their normal, normal, reasonable duties, as I'm going to call that century start two for the military. So we're going to have to suspend them. Right, so G. Your bent bankers, your bent contractors, your bent military officials and industrialists will have to be subject to the trial and, they, and you're going to have to punish the guilty and only the guilty uh, with reasonable punishments such as imprisonment. They must also be banned for life from any from holding any similar office ever again. And you have to do it country by country, you've all got to do it, but if just three countries start, it will be a landslide because everyone can see where this is going, it's going back to sanity. In cases of extreme crime where an individual or a body has been going around committing atrocities, uh, setting up most foul, disgusting murders, uh, confiscation of 100% of that individual or organisation's property is in order, as the rest of it obviously is up to the judge and jury concerned. H, it only takes two major countries to stop to start this. Look at Iceland, they began this, they're all right now. See? It can be done. So the money maze can be resolved. This is the way to resolve it. I. Meantime, ordinary people and minor industrial and business owners uh, should uh, switch their accounts to non-contaminated banks such as local credits and local uncontaminated banks. This isn't against rich people. A man can earn his money honestly. We don't touch it. It's honest. It's dishonesty we're after. It's corruption. It's this kind of economic warfare that has to be stopped. Lastly, I've got two recommendations to, to return to a mixed fiat metal backed currency for each country because obviously the, sol the solid stuff controls the fantasy of the non solid stuff, it's what you want. And then don't go back to a gold backed currency. I'll tell you why. It's because this cabal and malcontents and psychopaths of every stripe have obviously been hoarding that gold for years. So if you do go back to a gold-backed uh, currency, what's going to happen is you're handing the power straight back to the criminals concerned. Don't do it. Go to a silver-backed currency or similar, and then you then you sidestep them. They've got all the gold. What they're going to do with it? Nothing. And that's what you do. That and that's the set. That's the first recommendation. The second is this: that um, you've got to pass laws, uh, and you've got to enforce them. There's got to be inspectors. The same in every country, that no one person, uh, business, bank particularly, government particularly, or corporation can own more than one third of any industrial sector and not more than any such holders across more than three industrial commercial sectors per country. And that's going to stop these bastards right in their tracks because what they've been doing is they've been buying this, this and this over... And although their buyings are legitimate, are honest, what's, what they're doing is they're doing two things. One, they're owning all the resources and all the industrial capacity of that nation, which is conquest. And the other is, is they're ruining the, that nation's youth, their, their chances or hopes for the future, or their ability to develop as entrepreneurs, inventors or creators themselves. It's like a kind of strangulation. It can't work and it would eventually destroy that country. So you stop that kind of thing. Because, uh, well, you just can't have it. You just can't have somebody owning the whole country and everybody else starving to death. It's just stupid. So this is to stop the insane greed and manipulated criminalities in the future. And why people didn't do this before, I don't know. I think it's because they're all thick as planks. It's pretty obvious. So my belief is that these recommendations, if followed with faith and honesty, will resolve the fiscal crisis of all the countries uh, now facing catastrophe, particularly America. And all you've got to do is just do that. Now the powers that be aren't going to do it because the little people can and will and must. Okay. Press the button again. Yeah, press the button.